Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Creatively Expressive. My name is Amy, and today I've got some really pretty neutral fall decor DIYs for you. If that sounds like something that's interesting to you, then please stick around. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you found me, and I hope you'll consider becoming a part of my creative family by subscribing to my channel. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back, and I just want to say that I really appreciate your continued support. Now let's get started. For project number one, I will be making a bead garland. To make this, I'm using this bag of mixed beads that I found at Goodwill. I'm using seven of the glass orange beads and seven of these oblong beads from the bag. I will also be using some unfinished wood beads from Amazon, and I will be using seven of each of two different sizes. I will be using one of these little wooden tags that I got from Hobby Lobby, and this wooden leaf cutout that I got from Amazon. I'm going to paint the wooden beads, and to make that easier, I am putting them on wooden skewers separated by a piece of masking tape. I'm going to paint the smaller beads with white chalk paint, and I am dipping my brush in a bit of water to water down my paint so that some of the wood will still show through. And then I'm going to paint the bigger beads in the color Dusk by Waverly. Now I'm using the color Harvest Orange to paint the wooden leaf cutout. When the paint on the leaf was dry, I used some Starbond super glue to glue it to the little wooden tag. Now it's time to assemble the garland. I put a piece of masking tape on the end of a piece of jute twine to make it easier to thread the twine through the beads, and I am alternating the colors of beads on the twine. Once all of the beads are threaded on the twine, I cut the twine and add another piece of that tape to the other end of the twine so that I can add the tag to the twine. Then I am going to tie the twine into three knots. I like to have a nice big knot on my garlands, and to do this, I add little dots of hot glue from a low temperature gun to the tied knot, and then wrap some more of that twine around the knot. I keep adding little bits of glue and wrapping the twine until I'm happy with the size of the knot. Then I add a little bit of glue to the twine the beads are on, and stick the leftover piece of the twine to it. Then in order to hide the leftover piece of twine, I am going to thread it through my beads and I add tiny bits of glue to the jute between every couple of beads to stick that leftover piece down. Once I have the leftover piece threaded through four or five beads, I cut off the end of the twine and then I add some glue to that end, and then I stick that end to the longer piece of jute. And now for the other end of the garland, I'm going to make a tassel. To make a tassel, I'm using this white and tan jute that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I wrap it around my hand about 20 to 25 times, and then I cut it away from the roll of jute. 
Then I cut another piece of jute and I thread it through one end of the wrapped bundle of jute and then I tie three knots. Then I am going to cut the opposite end of the bundle, making it into several pieces of jute twine that are tied together. Then I fold the pieces of twine in the opposite direction and this will hide that knot I tied inside of my tassel. Now I'm going to cut another piece of jute and wrap it around my tassel about an inch down from the top and then I tie it into three knots. To add the tassel to my garland, I thread the jute on the garland through the top of the tassel and tie the tassel to the garland. I tie three knots and then I want to make the knot bigger like I did at the other end of the garland, so I'm going to repeat the same steps that I did on the other end. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of hot glue to that small dot and then I start wrapping the leftover piece of jute around the knot. I keep adding more glue and continue wrapping until I'm happy with the size of the knot. Then I add glue to the jute on my garland and I stick the leftover piece to my main piece of jute. And I am going to hide that leftover piece by threading it through the beads and gluing it down every one or two beads. When I feel like I have threaded it through enough beads, I will cut off the rest of the jute and then glue that end down to my garland. Now to complete my tassel, I want to hide the knot that I made earlier. To hide that knot, I am going to wrap the two ends at the end of the knot around that area and glue them down. This way the knot is hidden and I have no weird loose ends. Now all that's left to do is clean up the ends of my tassel by cutting them all the same length and once I have done that, this project is complete. For project number two, I will be using this gather sign that I got from Dollar Tree and this long rectangular sign that I found at Goodwill. The first thing I do is take the rectangular sign outside and sand all of the paint off of it. Now I'm going to repaint it with the colors French Linen, Nimbus, Dusk, and Cafe Noir. I want my sign to have the look of a pallet wood sign that has been pieced together, so I'm going to start taping off sections of the sign. I start by taping off two sections and then I'm going to dry brush over those two sections with the color Dusk.
and I am purposely leaving some of the brown from the sign showing through in some areas. When the paint is dry, I will remove the tape from those two areas and tape off another area. I want this new area to be right up against the first painted area. So I put the piece of tape on top of the painted area, lining it up with the edge of the painted area. And I am using the color Cafe Noir to dry brush over this new area and then I will remove that tape. At this point I decided to use a fatter painter's tape so that I didn't have to be as careful with painting over the edges of the tape. I am just randomly taping off sections of my sign and choosing colors for the sections that I think will look good. Also, I'm making sure to stagger my sections to make the sign look more natural. Now I'm using the color Nimbus, which is like a really light gray, almost white color. And then I'm going to add a section of the color French Linen. And I am just going to continue to tape off and paint sections with those four colors until all areas of my sign have been painted. Now I want to lighten up my sign just a bit, so I'm going to lightly dry brush over the entire sign with some white chalk paint. I'm using a larger chip brush to paint over the majority of the sign, and then a small chip brush to paint along the edges of the paint colors and along the edges of the sign where I want to concentrate that white color a little bit more. Now this sign has some grooves going across it horizontally and I want to make them stand out more. So I'm adding some tape along the edges of those grooves first and then I'm taking a small detailed paintbrush and using the color Cafe Noir to paint in those grooves. Then I want it to look like there are vertical grooves between each paint color also. 
To do this, I'm taping off skinny sections along the edge of each painted area. And then I will use that same fine detailed paintbrush and the color Cafe Noir to paint in those taped off sections. Now I'm taking that gather sign from the Dollar Tree and removing the hanger from it. Then I want to distress that gather sign and lighten it up a bit, so I'm going to lightly dry brush over it with the color white chalk paint. Then I went into my Silhouette Design Studio and I designed this decal to go below the word gather and I cut it out on stencil vinyl. I center and stick that stencil to the bottom of my main sign and then I am going to paint over it first with a layer of Mod Podge. This will seal on the edges of my stencil to prevent any bleed through. And I am using a sponge brush to do this and I am pouncing it in an up and downward motion over my stencil. When the Mod Podge is dry, I am going to paint over the stencil with the color Cafe Noir. And when the paint is dry, I peel up that stencil, and for the last step, I am going to use Starbond Super Glue to glue the gather sign to my main sign. And now this project is complete. For project number three, I will be making over these two fall signs that I found at Goodwill. First, I am going to be using the color moss green to paint the leaf on the leaf sign. And then I'm going to be using the color Dusk to paint the pumpkin on the pumpkin sign. Now I'm going to use the color Ivory to paint over the outer areas on both signs. At this point, I am liking the look of both signs much better, but I still think they need something to make them look more finished and more high end. So I'm going to make a frame for them with these 3 8 inch by 2 inch by 3 foot pieces of wood that I got at Lowe's. Mm -hmm. 
I line the wood up with the first two sides of my sign and mark it with a pencil and then I take them outside and cut those two pieces. Then I use painter's tape to tape those two pieces to the sign. Then I line up the remaining wood with the sign and the first two frame pieces, then mark the length of them onto the remaining wood to make the other two sides of my frame. Then I take those marked pieces out to my saw and I cut them down. And I will do this for both signs. Then I will use the Stain Color Special Walnut to stain all of the frame pieces. Once the frame pieces have dried, I'm using Starbond Super Glue to glue the frame pieces to my signs. And I am gluing on the two shorter pieces first, and I am also using this accelerator spray to make the glue dry faster. Then finally, I will glue on the longer frame pieces, and this project is complete. I just love how a coat of paint and a frame elevated these signs from dark and drab to beautiful high-end looking signs. For project number four, I will be using this small sign that I found at Goodwill and this blessed word wood cutout that I got in a pack from Dollar Tree. My original plan was to use a sticker tile from Dollar Tree to cover that sign area of the sign. I measured the sign and then cut myself a template out of a piece of white cardstock. I put the template on the back of the sticker tile and traced it into the center and then cut it out. Then I peeled the backing off of the sticker and stuck it down to the sign. At this point, I think it's cute, but not very fall looking. My plan was to paint over the tile with ivory chalk paint and then dry brush over the raised areas of the tile. So I taped off the frame and then I painted the tile with ivory chalk paint. Then I start using a sponge brush in the color Cafe Noir to start dry brushing over the tile. But it didn't seem to be working, so I switched to a paintbrush. The raised areas on the tile aren't very prominent, and I think that's why this wasn't working out the way I had planned. I didn't get very far before I decided this just wasn't going to work. So then I decided to peel up the tile and start over. I thought about trying to use another tile, but then I decided against that. So now I decided to paint the sign. In order to make it easier to paint, I am sanding off the wording on the original sign first. After sanding off the wording and cleaning off the sign, I am going to paint it with the color Nimbus. Then I will set the sign aside and I am going to paint that blessed word cutout with the color Cafe Noir.
Then I went to the Silhouette Design Store and I purchased this ball cut file. I sized it to fit on my sign and then I cut it out on stencil vinyl. And I am using transfer tape to attach the stencil to my sign. Now I'm going to paint over the stencil first with the color Nimbus to seal in the edges of my stencil and prevent any bleed through. When the layer of Nimbus is dry, I'm going to paint over the stencil with the color Moss Green. And I think it took me two coats of the green to get the coverage that I wanted. When the green is dry, I peel away the stencil and then I remove the painter's tape from the frame. Then for the final step, I'm going to use Starbond Super Glue to glue the blessed word to the bottom corner of the sign and then this project is complete. And that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys are a fan of the more neutral fall decor, the more classic fall decor, or a combination of both. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it's inspired you. If you did enjoy the DIYs that I've shared with you today, then please show me some love by subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, giving me a thumbs up, commenting, or even sharing this video with anyone that you think might enjoy it. And I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!